Hello, welcome to Joy in Our Town. We're so happy you joined us today. I have a wonderful guest with me named Marsha Washington. She currently serves as a program manager for the Tree of Life Ministries of Orlando, which is a nonprofit that provides transitional housing to our homeless veterans. And we are going to be talking about several homeless issues today. So we want you to stay tuned because I'm sure you know someone out there that might need this information or you yourself. So stay tuned, go get some pencil and paper and take some notes about what Marsha will be sharing with us today. Welcome, Marsha. We're you. so happy, happy to have you. Thank you. And I would like you to tell our viewing audience a little bit about yourself and what you do and how you've come to do what you do now. Awesome, yes. Um, thank you for having me again. Uh, my name is Marsha Washington. I am with the Tree of Life Ministries of Orlando. And I am a program manager where we provide transitional housing to 32 homeless veterans here in Central Florida. Um, so um, I had a career in news and got laid off. <laughs> so uh, my mother is actually the um, founder of the organization. Her brother became a homeless veteran and she had to navigate through the system and find out everything oh. that um, he needed to help him through that process. And so she just really had a heart for veterans and uh, spent her savings and housing veterans um, that she found that were homeless, literally getting people off the streets and homeless camps and so forth, putting them into housing, going in, cooking meals for them every night and just providing a wonderful service. Um, and so after that, someone told her, hey, you know, you can get some money for this, a grant through the VA. And then eventually she acquired a grant that gave her 32 beds to house homeless veterans. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And here you've been involved yes. all along because you probably <laughs> lived with her and yes, helped her out yes, and definitely. saw everything. How exactly. Great. Yes. And you're doing some college you said. Yes, I am in school at UCF right now getting right. my um, master's in nonprofit management. Um, to help me better understand the business side, I went back to school and I have a degree in social work and I'm also getting my master's in social work. So just kind of working and understanding um, how to provide a service to these veterans who desperately need our help. Oh, that is so nice, Marsha. Bless you for that and your mom. And I know you said your daughter even is doing some things and yes, helping. Yes, um, she is a um, magnet student over at Dr. Phillips High School um, in TV production. And she did a documenter documentary recently on homeless youth in our area. So um, it was a real eye opener because I just wouldn't have imagined how many youth there are out there that are homeless. So it was um, definitely something that we all appreciated being a part of. That is so wonderful how your whole family is out there helping those that are in need. Yes. Thank you so much for what you do and for taking time out of your schedule to come and be with us to share about our homeless vets, veterans. So what who are the homeless veterans? Give us a little background on that. Yeah, homeless veterans, I mean, we have an age demographic, um, normally from like 18 to about 65. Mm -hmm. um, our youngest veteran in our program currently is 23 years old. Um, many wow, times, <laughs> yeah, um, it's, you know, it's, it's really scary that, you know, a lot of the uh, veterans are, are coming back to the states and just not having a anywhere to go. Um, uh, many times there's a disconnect with the families and so they are starting all over again. Uh, many of them deal with what we call co-occurring disorders, whether it be mental illness and substance abuse. So they're just really survivors and we help them through the process so they're self-sufficient and they're able to live on their own. So they, they get like this when they go there, where they, they get into substance abuse and, and their minds because of what they see in the war? You know what, sometimes um, that is um, a point and a lot of times what we don't think of is, it's not just substance abuse, but sometimes they're, so, they're self-medicating. Um, they're finding the, um, themselves in depression or dealing with PTSD a memory loss and so forth. So they use substances sometimes to cope with the tragedies that they've experienced or that they've seen. So um, oh many goodness. times it's just really tough uh, to work through those issues for them. 
Wow. Well, since you work with the veterans, the homelessness in, uh, here in Central Florida, mm -hmm. do you have statistics of how many are out there and, and what's yeah. happening? Definitely. Um, Florida is actually second to California in its homelessness um, among veterans' population. So um, we're up there, and especially when you think about the population size. Of course, mm -hmm. California is larger than Florida, mm -hmm. and we're, we're right there behind them. Wow. <laughs> um, next in line, would be Texas and New York. Um, and then here in Orlando, um, there is a big homeless uh, population of veterans where we're top five in cities of our size. So there are a lot of veterans right here in the Orlando area that are homeless and really need our services. My goodness, and you said you house how many? We have um, a capacity of 32 veterans. 32, and yes. are there other organizations out there like yourself that help? Yes, yes. what we're called- Since there's so many. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. What we're called is grant and per diem housing, um, so, um, and which is funded through the VA, and there are two other organizations like ours that are in the area. One is Transition House out in Kissimmee, and then the other one is Aspire. And so we all kind of work together to help to get clients and veterans housing uh, so that they can transition into their own permanent housing. Well, that's great. Yeah. And so I'm sure that they are so grateful for that. So when they get transitioned, you get them in the housing, what all do you do for them? So what we do in transitional housing, we focus on um, intensive case management mm -hmm. where social workers are available and they see each client individually one time a week for about 45 minutes. And this time they work on um, different issues that they may have. Um, they work on budgeting and gaining income whether that be through employment or applying for benefits such as Social Security or disability or even VA pension. And so we help them through that process to increase their income and save money um, so they begin to look for permanent housing. And then we also help them to identify affordable housing, which is a big issue here in this mm -hmm. market. I bet because yeah. <laughs> housing is so expensive anyway. Yeah. My goodness, so what so exactly here they are and are they not being able to get jobs once they get out of the service? Yeah. Is that what's happening? Um, we're finding that to be an issue um, because a lot of times their military experience doesn't necessarily translate into a civilian career. So a lot of times you'll have a client that'll say, I've driven a tank for eight years. Like, what do I do? Where do I go? So um, it presents a little bit of a challenge for us to really get them um, into a career or even re-educated um, into a different field so that they can be able to maintain themselves financially. So how do you do that? How do you work with them to figure out what direction they should go in? Well, we provide a lot of um, life skill groups um, at the organization in-house. So we um, make sure that they we have employment resources, we have computers for them to job search, um, we have representatives from like Goodwill, Career Source, come in and work closely with the veterans so they're able to um, put them into jobs jobs that fit them or actually get them into school so that they can re-educate and kind of reinvent themselves um, once they're in civilian life. My goodness, how, how, did, how is this funded so that you can do all these awesome things for these precious men and women that have served our country. Yeah, um, well we do have a grant uh, through the VA, um, so that provides the majority of our funding and we do have some supporters in the community who believe in what we do, who believe in our work, um, and so they help us in any way um, they can. Um, you know, some things like um, we have people in the community who will donate bus passes um, because that um, poses a challenge for them to get transportation to their medical appointments or to job interviews. So um, that helps. And then there are also 
organizations who, um, like Publix, they'll provide food um, for us to give to the veterans. And many times they don't have a way to provide food for themselves. So um, we definitely have some really great community partners that support us in our mission to housing homeless veterans. So you actually do cooking for them and supply food and everything as well as housing? Yes, if, just if they bed? don't have food, we provide the food. Um, we have a kitchen. They actually have a food and nutrition class every Tuesday in our offices. So they come in and learn how to create economical meals, healthy meals. Um, we teach them how to, you know, read labels and go shopping and so forth on a budget. So we do all those life skill things to prepare them for life beyond a transitional program. That is so great. Give us an example of maybe some one of your guys or gals that came in and, you know, got some help and went on to better themselves. Yes. Uh, well, um, so many success stories, but I'll give you one. Um, actually, we started uh, uh, our organization back in uh, 2004 and we had a veteran who came in at that time he was literally sitting on the uh, steps of the church drinking and our executive director um, sat down with him and began to talk to him he came into our program and he was able to successfully, co successfully complete that program within two years, gained income. He was able to get um, access a lot of resources and now is living in a house with a roommate and doing well. Um, Great. He's self-sufficient. <laughs> um, he even continues to come to our church and support others and even gives money to help uh, when he can to help another, a fellow veteran in need. So he does a great job and he's our kind of poster child because he was our first veteran. Aww. So um, <laughs> we love to tell his story. That is so wonderful that, yeah. and I love it because here he gave back to yes, the community definitely. after he was helped. Yes. So that's great. And one more quick question. We just have less than a minute, but what are some of the goals to end the homelessness among the veterans? What are some that you see that you yeah, were all using? Um, you know, I, I, we deal closely with the VA. Um, we get a lot of our um, clients referrals through the VA. So um, the VA has, um, a plan that they want to make sure that um, as a whole that they go out and do outreach. So we go out into the fields, we go out into the shelters or places like homeless camps and so forth, and we let them know what's available to them. And then we want to connect them immediately for those who are at risk and out it, that are homeless to make sure that we're connecting them with all the valuable resources that we have to offer. So once we find them, do outreach, then connect them with the, the resources, and then partnership. Community partnerships are key. Mm. So with ministries like ourselves and state and local agencies, um, and it's just well as um, all those who provide affordable housing for veterans, that's key. So, you know, making sure that we have community partnering is absolutely important to end homeless veterans. That is so wonderful. Thank you for what you do. You. And your mother, your daughter, you're all working together. <laughs> yes, that is great. You. And right now, before we go into our second topic, we're gonna go to a quick 30 second PSA. We'll be right back. I'm Ed Van Aken, United States Air Force. I'm Stan Han, Lieutenant Colonel, United States Air Force. I'm David Williams, United States Army, 1st Cavalry Division. If you're a veteran and you're homeless, it's time to come home. If you happen to know a veteran who is homeless, please tell them it's time to come home. You're not alone, you're coming home. Oh, you're not alone. Hello and welcome back to Joy in Our Town. I'm Orlena Brazier, your host today. And we have an awesome guest with this, Marsha Washington, who currently serves as program manager for the Tree of Life Ministries here in Orlando, which is a nonprofit that provides transitional housing to homeless veterans. And we are just so happy you're with us. We're gonna be talking now about aged veterans transitions. Yeah. And I know that there's so many out there that 
are getting older and they are trying to maybe need to go into adult living centers or mm -hmm. homes. What exactly, how do you help that and help those precious people? Well, a lot of times we will get, um, that's actually the average age um, of the veterans that we get into our program, about 45 to 50 years age. So they are really um, having that issue of transitioning into maybe a an aging facility or um, community. Mm -hmm. So what we do is um, we get them to a point where they have a stable income. So whether, um, and even though it's a fixed income, we make sure that they, you know, have applied for everything, whether it's a pension or any kind of VA benefits for disability or social security. Um, we get them those benefits and then we make sure that they are able to really, um, kind of do things on their own. They're able to make appointments, that they're able to um, maintain their environment wherever that they're living. So that gives us a, a better idea or an assessment on where to go to next. So, um, we like to focus on or use something that we call our strengths perspective, where we take um, the idea of all the things that that veteran has been through and show how they've done a great job at working through those things and then use that as a way you've come this far, now you're gonna use those strengths to get you to the next point in your life. And so they use that and they say, oh, I really have made a lot of accomplishments. And so we help them then begin to identify those communities that fit their lifestyle and that um, will allow them to um, have as much freedom as they would like. And then also um, that's affordable for them. So we'll literally take them to the places and let them go look at the communities, um, provide them transportation, do walkthroughs with them, help them uh, maybe acquire some furniture and some I different items for their own housing. So it's really a collaborative effort. It's the client, the social workers and the agency all working together to make sure that they meet their own goals to getting to permanent housing. Wow, that is so wonderful. And I love how you were there to help them to build their self-esteem yes. and to help them feel like, you know, you are worth something and you can do this and let's finish strong. Yes. That is so great. Um, I know, what, what are some of the resources that are available out there? Because so many veterans, I know, many of them don't even know that there's things out there that they can get. You're right, to you're right. Um, so the first thing that we always make sure is we tell veterans, go to the VA. A lot of times some of the veterans don't want to go because they don't want to be stigmatized or they don't want to appear as being maybe weak. We see that a lot with our male veterans. Um, but we, they, you don't know what's available to you until you try and you go there, you apply for everything that there is. And if they say no, that's okay too, but at least you know. And so that's the most important part about it is connect with your local VA, make sure that you apply for every benefit imaginable <laughs> and see what you get. And then we can go from there and begin to work on um, providing services to you. Um, a lot of times uh, there are veterans who, you know, they don't even know that they could be getting um, 10% or 20% service connected that will give them an income for the rest of their lives. And they had no idea that that ringing in their ear or that knee pain could bring them an, a steady income and it could help them through life. So um, making sure that they connect with the VA and then um, other community resources such as the Tree of Life and other ones that provide um, shelter to veterans because they all have resource lists that will help these veterans navigate through the problem of homelessness. Yeah, and that's, I think that's part of the issue is that some people aren't aware of what's out there and yeah, what's available. Yeah. And I know that going to the VA um, can be overwhelming because yes. you don't know where to start. And yes. then they usually give you paperwork that high. You're right. and, but do you know people that would help them to fill out? Yes, I also, every time when a client, I have a client um, that goes to the VA um, and they come back and they're like, what? Is 
is going <laughs> on. Um, I also say, did you see your social worker? Every veteran is assigned, um, once they get into the system, they're assigned a team. Usually the teams are named in colors like the red team, teal team, or green team. Mm -hmm. So each team has a social worker. And so what they need to start doing is really um, making sure that they kind of advocate for themselves and say, I need help through this process. Can I see a social worker? Um, and if, um, let's just say for example, a social worker is not available and they're having difficulties, there's a patient advocate at each VA where they can go to and that person can really help them understand what's available and understand what direction or what step to take next. So that patient advocate is right there for that veteran to say, hey, I'm on your side. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure you get what's coming to you. So That is wonderful. Thank you for that information. Yeah. And another question that I have is sometimes um, someone who served, and I'm using it for example, my husband's parents, mm -hmm. his dad served in World War II wow. and he passed on. They didn't even know about VA benefits and that yeah. it even, his mother now is being blessed and helped to live in, you know, in a very expensive adult um, senior living place. Yeah. And um, the veterans have helped. Yeah, it's very important. And like I said um, before, especially you see it with a lot of the um, older veterans where they don't reach out for the help and they don't want to necessarily get the handouts because mm -hmm. they feel like they've fought for the country and you know they've um, bore a big responsibility. Wow. And so they, they're, they're like, well, you know what? No, I'm strong. I don't need this. And But it's, it's their right that they've worked so hard for mm. and sacrificed so much for. Yes. And so we have to make sure that all veterans um, are knowing what it is out there. They have to go to the VA. They have to make sure. And, and definitely it is challenging. It is mm -hmm. um, intimidating to go. But that's the first step. And a lot of times I, um, I think the VA is doing a better job right now at making sure that they're educating veterans, before uh, military personnel before they even get out. They have to go through courses to see everything that's available to them before they come back to the civilian life. So right now the VA is doing a great job at training veterans to let them know, hey, you have all these resources. You have a safety net. Someone's here to help you through this process. We know it can be scary, but we are here. So I think the VA is doing an outstanding job with the changes um, regarding that. But um, for people who don't even know, just go. Regardless mm -hmm. of how long you serve, when you serve, your time in service, um, uh, we, if you were combat or not combat, um, just whatever. If you were in any type of services, go ahead, go to the VA and see what happens. That is yes. so wonderful. And here you are, Marcia, helping them. Mm -hmm. And you were there to even help direct and guide them, which I think is so wonderful yes. and precious. And I really thank you. And I know the public thanks you. Our viewing audience thanks you. Because really, um, a lot of people, like, like we were talking about, there's a fear and they're not sure what to do or how to, to go yes. about it. Um, can you give us, do you have a, another success story with maybe one of these adults that, that went, that you know, one of our seniors that went and got help? Yeah, um, we have a, a veteran right now, um, and I consider him a, sex, a success story. <laughs> um, but he moved here um, from another state, and he was dealing with just different issues, legal issues, and so forth, and came to Orlando just for a clean start. Uh, a lot of times veterans come to Orlando even for the weather. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no snow it's, here. <laughs> right, it's a great place to be, of course. Um, yeah. And then um, they hear a lot of things about the job market in different places so we had him he came here um, and within several weeks was able to get 
actually not one job, but more than one, two jobs. Oh, and so wow. he's working day, <laughs> working night, has savings, um, and is looking to discharge any day within six months. They get up to two years. And oh, he's goodness. getting ready to leave. He could leave at any point because he was just so tenacious and motivated to really get out there and, like I said, reinvent himself beyond military life. So, and I think that's key. And he was open to receiving help from our facility. So I think that any time when we have a veteran come in and change, direction, change directions in a positive way, it's awesome for us. So um, I have another veteran really quick. He was yes. able to get his son back. Oh. He was in our program. Um, and had a disconnect with his family and so forth. Now he has custody of his son. Oh he got goodness. a new place. He, um, his son is in high school doing a great job. He also attends church at our ministry. Um, and he is just doing a phenomenal job with being a father and a veteran and an upstanding citizen in our community. So um, I, I just enjoyed them coming. We have a lot of veterans that come back. They tell their story and they encourage the ones that are there now and motivate them to be self-sufficient so oh <laughs> my goodness now isn't that wonderful yes. so here you have two awesome success stories mm -hmm. and probably you have a whole yeah. book of them <laughs> and especially with your mother working as many years as she has and, yes, and now you are and now your daughter is yeah. following just helping the community mm -hmm. that is so precious and I'm so excited that you were able to share with our precious audience about it's really not that hard. You do have to apply yourself, but if they go and they talk to the VA, mm -hmm. the VA will help them and direct them. If they yeah. have trouble filling out paperwork, I think they even at the VA have people yes. that will help you do that. Correct. Like you said, teams that help you. Yeah. So that is wonderful. So. Um, there's your source. Let's tell them one more time that there's several sources. There's one in Kissimmee. Yes. There's so, you here. Yep. It's the Tree of Life Ministries of Orlando. Um, we provide the transitional housing and um, we focus on um, making sure we get clients to permanent housing um, within two years of their intake. Um, then there's Transition House out in Kissimmee. They also uh, provide the same services. Oh, wonderful. Um, and they uh, focus, they really um, have a, um, created a great program, especially for those transitioning that um, have a um, legal background that may come mm -hmm. out the prison or jail system. And then Aspire also provides transitional housing for veterans. And they focus um, a lot mainly on those who are dealing with substance abuse and mental health. Um, so they are all, we're all kind of working together to make sure we combat this issue of homelessness among veterans. Wow. Thank you, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming and sharing. Bless you for joining us, and we hope that we have added a little more joy in your town. Go and have a wonderful week. See you next time. This program has been sponsored by the Trinity Broadcasting Network and is made possible by your telephone dollars. Your continual support can keep Joy in Our Town coming to your home every week. Write to Joy in Our Town, Post Office Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711.